Hello and welcome to 50green.com. This is a copy of the presentation I gave to C4, which is the Ventura chapter of the United States Green Building Council. No tie-dye required. But before we start, a pop quiz. You need to take out a blank piece of paper and a pencil. Quick. Going to give you a couple minutes to do this. Actually, we're going to give you 30 seconds to do this. Okay, ready? Go. 30 seconds. Draw a house. Go ahead. Quickly. Draw a house on a piece of paper. All right, the point of this experiment is uh, how many people drew a house like this. Usually, when I give this talk, it's a huge majority draw the simple house that you might have drawn then when you were in first grade, you know, a little chimney and a gable roof with the sun out there. We have very strong representation in our mind of a house, certainly in the United States. Did anybody draw something that looks like that, flat roof or a shed roof, or that maybe a house that's built into a hillside? Not likely. The point is, can we start to think differently about houses? Should we think differently about houses? I think if we're going to design the ultimate house, if we're going to design a new house that works a lot better and there's room for huge improvement in our homes, we have to think different. Okay, five quick points what we're going to talk about over the next hour, and I'm going to go super quick because I've got a lot of slides here. I'm going to start off with why, how did we get here, what's happening now, and then I'm going to propose an idea and open the talk for discussion. Okay, so why? You've probably seen these satellite photos, I think something similar this was an Al Gore's movie with the disappearing ice caps. Okay, so you've probably seen this satellite before. 1979, 2007, ice caps are disappearing. You can see that line there. I think we've lost a third of it. Carbon dioxide, we're way up there. I think we're currently 360 parts. But I don't even want to talk about global warming because there's so much issue with how people believe or politics behind it. I'd rather just look at two other interesting phenomenon. One is population. I was born right around this time when there was 3 billion people, doubled to 6 billion people by the year 2000. Currently we're about 7 billion. And by 2040, in our lifetimes, in 30 years, we're going to be at 9 billion people. That's 50% more than we had in the year 2000. Imagine that. Imagine this world with 50% more people. Now let's just take a look at global population. This piece of pie here, this little slice, that's United States of America. 5%. This is what I call Chindia, meaning China and India, almost 40% and the rest of the world. And look at energy use. Our little 5% uses 25% of all the world's energy. Chindia here uses about 20%. The Chindia energy has doubled since 1990. They were using around 10% in 1990. Guess what will happen over the next 20 years? You think there'll be a little bit more of a redistribution of this energy picture? Let's think. We got 40% of the people using 20% of the power. We got 5% of the people using 25% of the power. Interesting. Anyway, um, why green building? You may have seen this slide before too. We use almost half of our energy is for buildings. Approximately half of this, a little less than half is for homes. So how do we get here? Well, all started with the caveman, right? Just looking for a comfortable place to stay rather than sitting outside. The caveman found a little cave. You know, if he was smart, he might have found a cave that was facing south. So he got some uh, some solar radiation on those cold days so he could uh, chill in his hot tub. People up north used their materials that they had handy to build little homes out of ice. The Anastasi Indians, they, uh, they got smart. They used uh, overhanging rocks, which sheltered them from the sun in the hot summer. They built uh, multi-storied buildings, also allowed the sun to come in here in the wintertime to warm them up. Native Americans, probably the inventors of the mobile home, right? These nomadic tribes, they would just wrap up these teepees and move to their next hunting ground. You know, they would come back the next spring to their summer area. And we still have nomads today. This is the Taos Pueblo. Uh, people still live in these today. These are buildings that also paid attention to their environment. They were very heavy mass. You can see very small windows, 
letting uh, keeping the heat in low ceilings multi storied and then we have the early settlers coming to this country building log cabins and log cabins were just boxes really after the European types of homes they didn't even have windows so they didn't have to worry about orient orienting the building they didn't have glass back then and those kind of morphed into timber frame post and beam type structures and you can see we now have glass introduced I think the first glass panes were limited because they could only make them 12 inches by 12 inches so hence you would get these early windows these are called uh, 12 over 12s uh, you can see the divisions here and these actually have uh, you can see winter storm windows which have been added on top and you can see the temporary screens there but then the industrial era came, the industrial age. Two by fours were invented, machined lumber, milled lumber. We no longer had to go out there and chop and add a log to create a post and beam home. You could buy lumber. We could. This is when we started creating buildings of all sizes and shapes. And probably not a whole lot of thought was given towards the direction of the sun in this or the environment. I mean, you can see they had some outdoor porches here. Somewhere towards the end of the... 1800s or the early 1900s we started putting heaters, coal heaters, oil heaters, plumbing, electric, gas, lighting into houses. You could even buy homes in a catalog. Modern homes from Sears and Roebuck. Actually pretty pretty cool stuff, <laughs> an incredible selection of homes. And then early 1900s you had these modernists that showed up on the scene. This is the Villa Savoie by Le, Le Corbusier. And they thought that you should strip all ornament. They, they believed uh, Le Corbusier had some five points of architecture. He believed you should lift architecture off the ground. You should have free form. You should have free form windows and an open floor plan. You should also replace the ground that you're taking up here with a garden, a rooftop garden. And this whole issue of form versus function started to come up. I love this uh, poem by Louis Sullivan, the father of the mod modern skyscraper. I'll read it quickly. It is the pervading law of all things organic and inorganic, of all things physical and metaphysical, of all things human and all things superhuman, of all true manifestations of the head, of the heart, of the soul, that the life is recognizable in its expression, that form ever follows function. This is the law. Well, doesn't sound like much now, but the modern skyscraper basically dropped all previous attempts to follow decorative Greek and Roman architecture and Euro European architecture. It's really the first time I think they got over five stories. So you can see, I think this is about 12, 15 stories right here. Huge increase or huge change in technology for, for buildings, late 1800s. And of course now we build, I think the latest tower in Dubai is 3,500 feet high. We're getting close to the mile high skyscraper that uh, Frank Lloyd Wright drew up back in, I think the 20s or something like that. All right, so then we moved into mass production. This is Levittown, probably the first track home development uh, the beginning of tract home development in the United States by Levitt and his two sons. They created literally these little homes. They look like monopoly homes. These homes were 800 square feet. They cost, in 1947, they cost $6,990. This is all the components that went into those houses. Two carpenters could frame one of these houses in a day. They were all built on slab. The whole thing was engineered to be extremely quick and produced very cheaply. You can see they even have all the furniture and furnishings. Everything was thought out. We still build like that today. Anybody who's an architectural fan will appreciate this excellent design here of the 800 square foot house. You can see we have a separation of public and private spaces. Two bedrooms in the back. Here's the front door. Not much in that. And I think the Feng Shui people would say you shouldn't have a stair going out where the door comes in. But uh, the house faced the front, the street, which was out this way. 
and if you wanted to spend a thousand dollars more you got a radically different building and this was attributed to the California movement I guess Californians were ahead of their time even back in the 40s but if you'll notice we've now turned this house sideways here's the front is out this way and the two bedrooms are on the side of the house so what does this do this is totally radical it opens up the living room towards the backyard so mom or the homemaker here can sit in the living room and watch the kids in the backyard rather than playing in the street big change in American life so what kind of things have we learned well we still build like Bill Levitt did we still build track homes you can see these homes all over the world certainly in California but uh, drive north of Denver you'll see the same thing they're even now doing this in the Persian Gulf they're, they're, they're creating these crazy islands out of sand you know they're dredging the, the sea to build these islands but look at the houses they're building they look almost exactly the same as the same thing you could find in Denver or Los Angeles or Dubai Ventura, Ojai, where we live, um, I googled uh, or I looked for these are new homes in, in Oxnard that are being built right now. Looks pretty similar. See, you could be in Dubai or Oxnard, no different. This is sort of our typical kind of uh, Ventura home, built in the 40s, 50s, 60s. We can now build homes out of SIPS panels, pretty cool stuff highly insulated we can build timber frame walls still we can do rammed earth we can do hay bale we can do ICFs this is foam around concrete rastra but the majority of our homes are stick framed as a matter of fact the average American home 90 percent of them are stick framed 80 percent of the 60 70 million single-family homes that exist in the United States now were built between World War two and now the average home is somewhere around 2200 square feet burns up 11,000 kilowatts of electricity primarily uses gas to heat but secondarily 30 percent of the homes use electricity the average American home has something like two miles of cracks and leaks highly inefficient and 60 percent of all the housing units are single-family homes but how many homes do you think paid even the slightest bit of attention I mean think back of that little 800 square foot home to how the sun entered or was kept out of the house I, I would be willing to say less than five percent just a little slide showing the growth uh, 1950s 983 all the way up to current actually I think we've gone down slightly from 2300 square feet we know that our houses some 40 percent is used for heating and cooling another 20 percent for lighting and hot water we have zillions of different climatic conditions in our country alone not to mention the rest of the world we've got marine layers marine climates on on the coasts obviously we've got cold super cold and dry we've got super cold and wet we've got hot and humid hot and dry so obviously you can't you shouldn't build you shouldn't expect a house that is exactly the same in Ojai or Ventura to work the same way as it would in Fargo or Miami as a matter of fact in Ventura uh, the climate is very benign and very little heating or cooling degree days in our climate the higher the number the, the more you um, demand you have for heating or cooling in, in this case. Ojai 10 miles up the hill from Ventura has almost the same heating but look at the difference about three times as much cooling. Here's Miami almost no heating but a ton of cooling and vice versa for Fargo lots of heating not much cooling. So can we think different about how we build houses or do we sit around and wait for unobtainium? For those of you who don't recognize that name, did you see Avatar, the new movie? Unobtainium is on planet Pandora. It's where the miners have to go uh, on Earth to, to mine this mineral, which is the new source of fuel on Earth. Unobtain or there is no more fuel left on Earth. So in the 22nd century, according to Avatar, this is where, <laughs> where the fuel came from. 
Well, I suggest we we think differently. And in honor of that, I'd like us all to take the nonconformist's oath. So please repeat after me. Number one, I promise to be different. Go ahead. I promise to be different. Number two, I promise to be unique. I promise to be unique. I promise not to repeat things other people say. Okay, that's stolen from Steve Martin or attributed to Steve Martin. I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, what can we do? Well, we can build greenhouses. We've got all kinds of new greenhouses out there. We can build houses out of containers. We can build modern igloos. We can build really high-tech buildings with shades and solar panels. We can build passive house buildings which have super thick walls and, and really well sealed walls so we only need small amounts of energy to insulate them. We can design buildings that look just like crumpled up pieces of paper. Um, there's some really cool things done by uh, people like Michelle Kaufman with mobile homes. This is the Glide House. We've got all kinds of people who can advise us on how to do all these things. And this summer, I went and stayed in an earth ship in Taos, New Mexico. Uh, this has been developed over 40 years by a guy named Michael Reynolds. Really interesting. He's building houses out of trash, tires, cans, bottles. He builds walls, the main walls of the house. The structural walls are built out of tires. They're stacked up like that. Also, walls built with glass and aluminum cans. That's what an earth ship looks like. They're built into the hillside. You can see there's sort of an earth berm behind and they're designed so they they let the sun in or keep the sun out based on this overhang and based on the latitude of the house. These homes are totally off grid. They create their own energy, deal with their own waste. You can see here's the back side. It has a big earth berm on the back side. Very organic looking. As a matter of fact, the six pillars of earth ships, which I think is really cool to think about for the ultimate green home is number one to use salvaged and recycled materials number two to create energy number three capture rainwater four heat and cool itself number five treat its own wastewater and number six to grow its own food so imagine if you had a home that you built yourself no mortgage no utility bills it was even growing your own food I mean do you think that might have a difference in the way you travel the world, I mean, the amount of money you needed to make, things like that. Pretty cool philosophy. He's got whole developments, uh, communities of earthships, and this one here is sort of a, a mega earthship. They're net zero, you know, they produce as much energy as they use, they're off, also off the grid, but they're not buildable in most parts of the country. If you tried to build this house in Ventura, they'd laugh you right out of the, the building department. You know, structure doesn't make any sense. In Ojai, I built a house a couple years ago, and, and the program of this house was to build a house that worked well in the Ojai environment. If you remember, it's super hot in Ojai. So we built this house with a great big umbrella roof shading the entire house. We built a narrow house. allows a lot of light in and ventilation through the house. Also uses uh, less materials because it's stacked. We built it slab on grade, and we tucked it into the hillside. I want you to remember this slide here, not the dude, but, but this retaining wall, this concrete retaining wall on top of the slab. It's uh, stick-framed. We wanted a house that was easily buildable by local people. All right, so a couple things that we learned. This house that we built is 50% better, uses half the electric, half the gas, or better than, than our old house, which was a similar size. It sits right here about eight and a half on this Energy Star yardstick. I think the average US home is more like two and a half. So it's a huge improvement. Metal roofs are, are great, uh, particularly good for collecting rainwater, reflecting sun's heat. Here you can see the interior. It's this narrow house, um, this sloping shed roof, which besides making a nice area to put uh, panels on top of it also allows and encourages ventilation up and out through the house lets a lot of light into the house 
And if you remember that concrete wall I was showing you where the dude was standing over here, this is uh, Christopher's room here. And you can see it's built in the hillside. So this has huge thermal mass. This area, when Ojai temperatures soar up above to 100 and above, we have to turn on the air conditioning in this upper floor of this house to cool it off. Except in this room, this room will stay almost 20 to 30 degrees cooler than the outside temperature. And it's largely because it's in this kind of stuck into this hillside and the or the average temperature of the earth down as you dig down five feet is somewhere between 55 60 degrees. So this works as kind of like a giant battery keeping this cool. Here you can see that in, in this graphic. So I'd like to propose this idea of what the ultimate home might be. And here's a couple of things I think we need to include. It's, it's got to be cheaper. The number one question we get about green building is how expensive is it? Certainly nowadays with the crash in real estate prices, you know anybody building a house wants to make sure they have a very good value for it. Maybe it's smaller or pushing towards a smaller size than, than houses have been. Obviously energy efficient, healthy, more comfortable but it's also got to be buildable. We got to be able to get permits. And and when I say buildable, you know, using typical materials that typical contractors are used to working with. Other ideas you can make your own list, but you know, security, fire resistance. Are you growing food? Is there a garden? Is it a smart home? How about technology savvy? Certainly computer ready and communications ready. I like to think of I like to use these mind maps for working out ideas and you can see here's the ultimate house in the middle and we have all these things that sort of affect it you know shelter what what does shelter mean comfort security architecture you know art science it's a combination of the two but style you know what does our environment in, involve in our ultimate house you know take into account things like wind rain temperature sun you know how does food fit in waste cost of the house transportation we got lifestyle over here technology size of the house you know green we've been talking about you know what does green mean uh, no toxins sustainable energy uh, all these kind of things kind of wrap around here and, and input may mean different things to different people in different locations I, I have this idea of a modern earth ship and and here's the back side this would be the north side you know, a home that's built into a berm even if you had a flat lot you could build a berm up and and create an artificial uh, thermal mass which would help you heat and cool this building we could build the back wall out of concrete you know we all know how to use concrete concrete slab slab on grade simple technology simple construction it could easily have this shed roof uh, trimmed depending on your latitude for the best solar orientation so it shades you in the summer and warms you in the winter we're going to heat up this big mass this big battery this big energy piece and, and this is going to heat and cool our house without even using electricity or fuel uh, a couple shots from SketchUp you can see this is in the um, summer equinox June 21st the shadow line is right here you know it's not entering into the house and here's the winter time you can see this sun Here's the shadow way back here. You see this roof line shadow. So the sun's entering deep into the house to heat that thermal mass. You could still have a small solar array for to since we've already wiped out 40% of the electric for heating and cooling or 40% of the power, you can have a much smaller solar system. Now here we are right back to the basics. Sun. The biggest nuclear power plant we've got, right? There's just an inside shot removing that roof. You can see uh, in the wintertime how that sun would penetrate deep into the building. We've got high windows on the backside, so there's lots of light, lots of ventilation in this building. It would have to face south. It's going to have to be a thin building. It could be a one-bedroom building. It could be a you know a larger. This is a 2,400 square foot version, which has two build two uh, kids bedrooms and a master bedroom, with sort of a central area. 
you know, it could look very much like this with the, the sloped roof and the high windows, good ventilation. You have the steel roof for the collecting the water. So what could this house do? Well, you know, as I said, I think it could eliminate 90% of our heating and cooling. It would require only a small solar array to, to power the rest of the stuff. I mean, you could also put in things like solar hot water panels. You, you could trick this out in a bunch of different ways. But it can also be very simple and cost effective, very bare bones. Uh, it could even be set up so you could add on to it over the years. Grow. So again, can we think different? Or are we going to just keep building these kind of buildings? Check us out at 50green.com. Thank you for listening. Otis Bradley signing out.